Father, we say thank you again for bringing every one of us from our various homes to be gathered together today in your name. Lord, we ask that in the name of Jesus, your Holy Spirit divine will be here with us. Anything in our lives that will prevent the move of your spirit and the move of your power. We pray, Lord, that you take such things away from us and we ask that you forgive us our sins and cleanse us from every unrighteousness so that our worship today will be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name. Amen. I seem not to enjoy indulging 
was in already or not. I was willing, I was always willing to do the right thing. Although I went to church as a very young girl, I didn't understand Jesus and his teachings. And I had a lot of unanswered questions. One day in my former church, when I was 10 years old, my pastor said, if any of us sitting down had not given that had not given our life to Christ, we should do so now. And he told us to say this in his prayer, which I did, and by the grace of God, I became born again. But I still had a lot of unanswered questions. Then I joined a Christian club called Pathfinders, where, I, where some of my questions were answered, although I, have, although I have surrendered my life to Jesus, but I was, I still had, sorry, I was still having some problems with my salvation. Last year in this church, Julius Baptist Church, the pastor asked if we were sure that we were going to heaven, and all of us said yes. But when he explained further, we all realized that we may not get to heaven. So he led us in the sinner's prayer and joined, and I joined in the prayer. After the prayer, I, after the prayer, I explained that to those who had given their life to Jesus before, and I had rededicated my life to Jesus. It was then last year, in 2013, I became sure that I was born again. After I was born again, I started to understand more about Jesus and his teachings. I started reading the Bible, although not regularly, and praying more, which brought me close to God. Our pastor continues to encourage us to do our quiet time through regular reading of the Bible and prayer. I'm still struggling with the aspect of reading my Bible daily. I pray that God will help me after today. today's baptism to take the Bible reading seriously. Thank conversion experience. Before I became a Christian, I was a Muslim. I wasn't very dedicated to my Islamic religion as I didn't always complete my prayers each day and I also didn't, didn't understand the Holy Book, which is the Quran. More so, I disagreed with most of the beliefs because I thought they were unethical and not in line with my personal beliefs. So I was kind of indirectly seeking for the right way and truth. This way and truth came to life when I was studying religious education in my secondary school. My RE class was one of the biggest influences that turned me into a Christian. In my RE class, I got to understand the basic beliefs of Christianity. The second biggest influence in turning me into a born-again Christian is when I start, started attending this church, Tree of His Baptist Church, church in Wormley, Hertfordshire. Our, per, our pastor taught, me, taught us about the Ten Commandments and se several times, and I made the decision to obey the Ten Commandments and stay put in Christianity. I attend our church regularly, thanks to my mum who always encouraged me and my younger brother to attend. Going to church helped my knowledge of Christianity in its commandments and belief to grow. This also established my belief in our Lord Jesus Christ. Then one day in the year 2013, our pastor told us that coming to church and having a man knowledge of the Christian faith in our Lord Jesus Christ would not take us to heaven. He said the only ticket to heaven was for one of for, for one to surrender one's life to Jesus Christ and profess Jesus Christ as one's personal Lord and Savior. Our pastor then asked how many times of our, how many of us were willing to go to heaven, and I and many others in the church that that glorious Sunday in the pastor's living room raised up our hands and he led us to say the sinner's prayer, which I took seriously. And from that day I became born again. Praise the Lord. Amen. After giving my life to Christ, I have grown in my understanding of Christianity and, and of Jesus Christ himself. I have also become closer to God through my daily quiet times, which our pastor encouraged us to do every day. My per personal quiet time with God have increased my faith in God and also made me understand the teachings of Jesus, Jesus Christ through praying and reading my Bible daily, which I struggle to do. But God is still helping me to grow in him daily. Thank you. Let's put our eyes together for our young class. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Let us pray. Mighty Father, this is the moment that your children have been waiting for. We ask that in the name of Jesus, you will accept their baptism. And Lord, you will bless them. And you will renew their life afresh. 
in the name of Jesus. Father, this water they're going to be used, this water that's going to be used for their baptism, will plead the blood of Jesus around it. The Lord, it may seem like water, but Lord Jesus, the heavenly water will be released upon it. And Lord, it will heal their body. It will bless their souls. It will release anointing upon them. In the name of Jesus. Have your will, Lord. And let your name be praised. Jesus, name we pray. In the book of Matthew, chapter 28, I'm reading verse 18 to 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. I call the first candidate now. Whoever 
believes in Jesus Christ and is baptized shall be saved, and whoever does not believe shall be damned. And Jesus was baptized, and I am not call on Jesus, so I will be baptized. Alright, so you are telling us now that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And so you are prepared to do what your master did, your master Jesus. He was baptized and you want to be baptized. So joy, upon the confession of your faith, I, Reverend Awaba, we are Abel of True Believer Baptist Church. He ever baptized you in the name of the Father Amen. and of the Son Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
our children that the Lord have used uh, mightily. We're going to look at the word of God. What God says about what they have just done. Uh, it is not an easy thing. I want to congratulate firstly the family of those that have given their life. I want to thank our family for this wonderful encouragement given to these children, even to pass through baptismal class. As a Baptist, we believe when a child comes before the Lord that I've given my life to Jesus, the next thing is to go through classes. Uh, I want to thank you. May the Lord God tell to be with you and be with the children in the name of Jesus. Amen. Baptists will believe in scriptures. So we will quickly look at the scripture and see exactly what the Bible says about what the children have just done. Let's quickly open our Bible into the uh, Gospel according to Matthew. Chapter 3, and we're going to look quickly what the Bible says about baptism in mansions. When baptized in what we call baptism in mansions, other denominations, there's the various baptism, sprinkle of water, and other things, but we follow Jesus Christ's text because He's our Savior. Let me pray look at the book of Matthew, chapter Pray and we read through 12 and 17. Are you there? Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 12 says, uh, Let me start from 13. Then Jesus came from Galilee to Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be done so now. It is proper for you, for her to do it, to fulfill all righteousness. There Jesus consented. Verse 16. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, everyone was open. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. And enlightened him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my son, whom I love. With him, I am well pleased. Amen. Amen. This is my son, whom I love. With him, I am well pleased. I want to thank God Almighty for this wonderful privilege. For you to be among the living today. To witness these wonderful occasions. I thank the pastor to lecture the children and to bring them closer to the Lord. Brethren, I want to assure you as we are all seated, if Jesus Christ will come today and say to me and you and ask a question, <coughs> were you baptized? Do you believe in me? Brother, I do not say baptism is the qualification to ever know. Okay? Baptism is not guaranteed ever. That's one thing you need to 
know. But if you have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, he has more, he himself is baptized in my so definitely whoever that has accepted him needs to do what? To be baptized. It is a process. It is a process. But brethren, if Jesus Christ will come today, Jesus Christ will recognize the children that are just baptized before those who are not baptized. That's one thing. It might be difficult. Some pastor will not say it so that so those who are not baptized they will get annoyed. If Jesus Christ will come today, he will both of us recognize those who baptize just like him. He baptized. And one thing I'm afraid about Jesus Christ is not someone that you could cajole, you could tell her, you could bribe me. No! No, it's impossible. We have seen it, and I want to encourage us. You are here, and you are not baptized. There are no age limits coming before the Lord to be baptized. No. There is no age limit. In as long as you have cleared yourself that the Lord baptized, no one will force you. It is when you come, I'm ready to give my life to Jesus. No one will ever force you. Therefore, there is no age limit. Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist in Jordan River near Bethlehem. John has been explained that Jesus' baptism will be much greater than any other thing. John the Baptist has explained it, has said it, that Jesus' baptism will be greater than any other thing. And we read in the scripture what happened. You know, let me tell you. Very short story. Some years back, when I was baptized, I was expecting the same dope. And I asked my pastor, but I didn't see any dope. And he assured me that the Spirit of God is upon you already. Not until you see it physically. Spiritually, the Spirit of God is upon these children. You might not see it with your physical eyes, but I am assuring you, they will never be the same thing again. Amen. There is transformation in life. We can never ever continue the way we were born and continue, continue. There must be a time where we will transform from our present time, our present position, our present movement to another level. We exactly, the children, the Lord has blessed them as they partake in the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And why did Jesus Christ ask the question? Why is he being baptized? <coughs> Amen. <coughs> Baptism is when you give your life to Christ. I want to go away from this. But one thing about Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ never sinned. He's sinless. He never sins. But he may mention the one thing that I love most. Jesus Christ said to John the Baptist, he said, to fulfill all righteousness. Let do it because my Father in heaven has said, to fulfill all, all righteousness. Amen. Amen. Fulfilling all righteousness means to accomplish God's missions. To accomplish God's mission. There is a mission of God that Jesus Christ needs to follow. Amen. 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 And it was done. Jesus saw his baptism as an advanced God work. Jesus was baptized because he was confessing sin on behalf of all nations. He never sins. He is the same that me and you. And that is exactly what he does because of Calvary. 
if you are privileged to watch a film, you will know that oh, Jesus Christ is so too much a lot for me and you for all to be saved. Amen. Amen. And I could start an example, many people that are they stood up for nations. Remember Daniel stood up, Moses stood up, Nehemiah stood up to pray for the nation. Amen. Brethren, whenever you are in a position to stood up for other brethren, please go ahead and do it. And the Lord, willingly you are doing, is with you. And the says he will continue to fight your battle. And so it shall be in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus Christ says, He needs to be baptized because He was inaugurating His public ministries. Also, He was identifying with penitent people of God. Jesus Christ is always true by those who are giving their life unto him. John the Baptist revealed to baptize Jesus Christ. In what basis? He learned that he baptized Jesus Christ. He said, I have need to baptize you. I have need to baptize you. John knew that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. That's why he refused. Why am I going to baptize someone that is supernatural than me? Someone is higher than me. How am I going to baptize God? He knew Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The Son of God. Jesus had no need to be forgiven of sin because he was sinless. He doesn't need to be baptized. He doesn't need to go to baptismal class because he was sinless. He never sins. He never sins. Knowing John's Lothan, Jesus told him, it is proper for us to do to fulfill all righteousness, as I've said before. Do it not to fulfill all righteousness, because it's mandatory. It is said to fulfill all righteousness. So, John the Baptist now said, okay, my Lord, I'm ready to baptize you. And Jesus Christ was baptized. And God responded. There was a response when Jesus Christ was baptized. And the response, you might not hear it. And the same response upon our children that have been baptized is upon them. And the response of God, I read for you. When Jesus came out of the water, the Holy Spirit descended as a door and, and the voice of God spoken from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm pleased. This is my beloved Son in whom I am. I've said it, the children, when Jesus has come today, they qualify to have hand with Jesus because. They did exactly what Jesus Christ had commanded them to do. Brethren, if you are here, as I've said earlier now, no aid limit. No aid limit. What I need to do is just I surrender my life unto you. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Come into my life. And what in the Spirit of God says I should tell you? It has happened in the life of many that have said about Jesus Christ. If you truly believe in Jesus Christ, Quote and unquote, I am not saying that you will not have the body. No. That is not my preaching. Amen. Amen. Because the devil has his own agenda. And the Bible says that the devil in the book of John, chapter 10, verse 10, it says, He comes to steal, to destroy, and to make people cry. That's the agenda of the devil. Amen. Amen. But in as much as you have decided to teach so I have your side, no matter what comes up and down, left and right, Jesus is going to fight your battle. Amen. That is it. You are exemption. He will come. Devil will come. That is the agenda of 
when you become, either you are a Christian, when you are not Christian, you become. But you are peculiar because who that you believe he is greater than who all the world. Who did Jesus Christ? He will continue to fight the battle. That's one privilege. One privilege. And he said he will surely be with you. Let me give you a uh, testimony. There was a lady in America, they are traveling on holiday, and the mom of this lady, the innocent mom, he said to the lady, Oh, may Jesus Christ go with you. He went there with his boyfriend, they are going on, a, on holiday, and both of them said, Mom, no, no, Jesus Christ will not go with us. It is me and my boyfriend. We are going to enjoy ourselves. Jesus Christ will not go with us. And what, what happened? And they are in the car, they are going, and there was a great accident. That's how they end their life. Is this a pity? The innocent mom, he said, My God, Lord Jesus Christ, go with you. And immediately they told her, Oh, no, mom, Jesus Christ will not go with us. And what happened? They put in their destination, and they end their life. Brother, Jesus is powerful. It is God, and He will never forsake you. Yes. He said, I'm going to be with you no matter what you might be passing through. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to thank our pastor. Reverend James Akiola from Pentecost Baptist Church in Dagenham. Thank God for his life and what the Lord has been uh, using him to do. Uh, the Lord wants to bless you in Jesus' name. He's also a church planter like myself. He has planted two churches. <laughs> and the Lord has been using him greatly in the ministry in various ways. He just shared a wonderful testimony with me. That the Lord has provided a, a, a very big hall for them, for the church to worship. And the Lord wants to increase the anointing the more in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to take this song. We are going to take in number 237. In number 237. And I want you to reflect. Because we are going into the time of the Lord's Supper. I believe we are still on time by God's grace. So I want to sing in 2, 3, 7. As we sing this song, if you know you are there, you want to decide for Jesus. I want us to look at the lyrics very well and understand what we are singing. Lord, I'm coming home. Coming home. We are talking about is coming to Jesus. Are you willing to come to Jesus today? You can make that decision even as we sing together. I will pray for you. If you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, please do so because Jesus will soon come. As he said, he's going to come. Many are still doubting him. They don't even believe he exists. But I believe one day we appear. When he comes, where will you be? Let's try to together. Jesus, this is a unique opportunity for you to do so. 
Or are you here today, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus? You know your Christian life has been up and down. Today you shine for the Lord, tomorrow you are cold. Next morning you are hot, the other day you are cold. And you know within yourself, if Jesus will appear today, you won't make it to his kingdom. That's what the children share. We always remind ourselves that whenever we come to church, that when Jesus comes today, are we going with him? And so prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you saying today, today I will dedicate my life to Jesus. If you are saying that, I want you wherever you are to raise up your hand. We're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for you today. That today I will dedicate my life to Jesus. I've been a Christian, but today no. I want to renew my covenant with the Lord Jesus. I want to renew the covenant with Jesus today. Lord, I'm coming home. I've gone astray. I've done a lot of things contrary to your will. But today, I am coming home. I am coming home. I am coming back to you, Jesus. And the Lord is happy to accept you. Thank you for that hand that is raised up. We're going to pray now. If you want to join, please raise up your hand. We're going to pray for you. Today, you are decided for Jesus. Today, you are decided for Jesus. You are dedicating your life to Jesus. Close your eyes, please. Close your eyes. You are dedicating your life to Jesus. Raise up your hand. God bless you. Thank you very much. It is well with you. Say, I'm coming home. I've tried. I'm tired of sin. I'm straight, Lord. Now I'm coming home. I will trust thy Lord. Believe thy word. Lord, I'm coming home. Let's close our eyes as we pray for these ones right now. Please raise up your hand. We're going to pray. Don't be ashamed. You are before the presence of the Lord. Don't be ashamed. You are in the presence of the Lord. Heavenly Father, I thank you for these sons and daughters of yours. Who have said today they surrender unto you. Who are saying today they will dedicate their commitment to serve you. Lord God Almighty, I pray. Whatever they have done that is contrary to your will. Whatever they are doing that is contrary to your will. I ask Lord that you have mercy upon them. Forgive them Lord and cleanse them from every unrighteousness in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, as they are confessing you afresh and say they are sorry for what they have done, Lord, we pray you will accept them. And Lord God Almighty, let the power of the Holy Ghost release and come mightily upon them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We appreciate you in Jesus' name. Now, we are still praying. Repeat this prayer after me. Those of you who are raising up your hand, say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word. I thank you for coming to die for me. I have been a sinner for many years. But today, I am coming home. Lord, I have been in the church for many years. I said I am a Christian for many years. But Lord, I have not really obeyed your path. But today, Lord, I am coming home. Lord, I am coming home. Lord, I am coming back home. Jesus. Please have mercy upon me. I accept you afresh as my Lord and Savior. Please write my name in the book of life. Grant me the grace to walk in the path of holiness and righteousness all the days of my life. Help me, Lord Jesus, to pray daily to read your book. Thank you, Father, for accepting me in Jesus' name. Amen. Just put down your hands. Father, thank you for your children. Even though they have made a decision today, you will help them to follow this path to the hand, to the glory of your name. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's put our hands together. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Before we do the Lord's Supper, uh, we want to present the baptismal certificates to each of them. And then Reverend Akiola will help us to do that. Um, certificate of baptism present to you with a gift from the church uh, to you to read. And the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. As they take their gift, you can snap them if you want to snap them. The first person is Joy Babatunde. Joy Babatunde. I present this baptism certificate in the name of the Father, Amen. in the name of the Son, Amen. in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The next person is Sheila Rosin Dan.
uh, to send this certificate to Sheila in the name of the Father, Amen. Sons, Amen. and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Then finally, ring one, Inshallah. I uh, present this baptismal certificate in the name of the Father, Amen. Son, Amen. and the Holy Spirit. For the reason. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Turn your Bible with me to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. First Corinthians chapter 11, verses 20 to 30. I want to read. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not the eat, this is not to eat the Lord's supper. For in eating, everyone taketh before order his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunken. What? Have you no houses to eat and to drink? Or despise ye the church of God, and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had sought, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as often as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread, and drink this cup, ye be sure the Lord's death till it come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread, and drink this cup of the Lord, unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. 28. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not designing the Lord's body. 30. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. The Lord bless his words in Jesus' name. Amen. At this moment, let us pray. Father, as we partake in your table, may you bless us, bless our souls, bless our lives, heal our body, anoint us afresh. And may your name be praised. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Before we start this, I just want to explain to you. Various churches have the way they do this. Some call it Holy Communion. We in Baptist Church, we call it the Lord's Supper. And our understanding as Baptists for the Lord's Supper is for those who are baptized by mansion. Just as this one that we baptized. Those who have been dipped in water. That was to believe as Baptists that they should take this Lord's Supper. Because the passage we have read, Paul said that they were handling it anyhow. And as a result of that, many of them are receiving curses because they were taking the, the body of Christ and the blood of Christ anyhow they like. They don't even consider it important. They just take it. And it seems in those days, they eat a lot of bread. You say, ah, that was not enough. But give me my bread. Give me bread. Say, no, I, I've given you before. No, I need more. Give me more now. And then they will take the wine and get drunk in the church of God. And because of that, Paul said, that's why many of them are falling sick. And even some of them died because of that type of practice. And so as Baptists, we are very careful. We don't want anybody to die. <laughs> we don't want anybody to fall sick. And so we, we always challenge you at the beginning. If you know 
You are a child of God and you have been baptized by a mansion. You can partake of it. And then, in your own assembly, in your own church, if you know that you are a Christian, you have not been baptized by a mansion, but you, you feel that, well, I take it in my church and I want to take it in true about the church because my, I believe in Jesus. You are also welcome to take it. You understand? But know what you are doing. The Bible says, examine yourself. Examine yourself. Examine yourself and see that you are doing what? Verse 20 says, But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. None of us will drink damnation in Jesus' name. Amen. So, our pastor will be going around with a cup. Those who are baptized, come forward, you are going to take it. Three of you come forward, sit in front here. You are going to take it. Our pastor will be going around with a cup. But I want those that want to partake to raise up their hands when the time comes, so that we will know those that will not uh, uh, waste too much time on this. All right. Okay. The Bible says, and when he had given times, when he had given times, he break the bread. Father, as your children partake of your body, bless them Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Please raise your hand so that you will come to your side. He said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. You can take the bread now. Amen. After the same manner, he took the cup. says, and when they had sung an hymn, 
they went out into the Mount of Holy. Let us pray. You make your faith to shine upon them. Amen. That these children, oh God, they will not join the multitude in the United Kingdom to do evil. Amen. But Lord Jesus will be shining lights, Amen. shining forth your glory. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, this moment you want to go. And as we depart from this place to our various homes, and as these ones go to their homes and celebrate this new life, Lord Jesus, go with us. Amen. Bless us. Amen. Help us to do everything in line with your will. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Amen. We indeed appreciate you. For we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.